Alan Miles here. We're going to make a simple subtractive synthesizer. This is part one where we've made a multi-wave oscillator, ADSR amp envelope and an overall level. So it will sound something like this. And you can shape your sound as well. And so on. Let's get started. File, New Ensemble. Then I like to select View, Vertical Split. That's so I can see the panel and the internal parts of uh, my reactor synthesizer as we go. Let's just check our um, audio settings, audio MIDI settings, File, Audio MIDI settings, Audio, select the sound card that you're using at the time. Select the MIDI tab and uh, select the correct MIDI inputs. I, when I get confused, I put them all on. Just click on them, put on and say OK, and then you'll be ready to go. So we're not using the imports for this synth, so I'm going to delete those and I've just got my left and my right. Let's set up the mixer and uh, the outputs, the polyphonic side of the outputs. Right click, built-in module, auxiliary, audio vi voice combiner. Then I'm going to copy that, command C, paste it, command V, so I've got two of them. These are so you can play your instrument polyphonically later when we turn it into a polyphonic uh, synthesizer. So we're going to select those, connect them to the outputs. The light comes on if they're connected correctly. Right click, built-in module. Signal Path, Stereo Amp Mixer. And there it is there. We're going to connect the left to there and the right to there. The light comes on when it's connected correctly. Right click on that level part of this and create control. You'll see it instantly appears on the panel up here uh, once you've created it there. And if you select this spanner icon here, you can move this about when we've got a couple of other um, functions on this panel. So that's a start. Do a file, save as, save it as your subtractive synthesizer one. Now let's create our own multi wave oscillator. So I'm going to get a box to put it in because I'm going to have multiple waveforms and uh, rather than fill up my panel with loads and loads of stuff, which will really happen later, I'm going to right click, macro, new empty right click macro new empty and while that's selected i'll go over to the inspector at the far left here and i'll call it osc one and there it is so let's double click and we'll enter inside there if when i'm inside i want to go back up another level i can just double left click and uh, it'll take me in and out of that box let's go inside that box with a double click Nothing in there, so let's right click, built in module, oscillator, sawtooth. And then let's right click, built in modulate, module, oscillator, triangle. Same again, right click, built in module, oscillator, sign, and again, pulse, finally, and noise oscillator. And tidy these up as you go, because uh, you'll thank yourself later. Excuse me, I accidentally right-clicked on that then. Just moving these around. So we've got the, the macro, the box that we're putting these things in. Here they are here. And there's no outputs at the moment. So let's right-click, built-in module, terminal, outport. And there it is there. Now if I go back up another level with a double left click, we can see that now I've put that output. Now this box has got an out, output on it because I put that in there. Now we can't connect these all at the same time. We're going to need a switch in between those so we can switch between. So let's right click, built in module, panel, switch. And whilst we've got it selected, if we go over here, to the inspector for that switch, function, 
see its minimum number of ports down here. Let's drag that up to five because we've got five oscillators here. And there it is there. And let's, whilst it's selected, go over to the inspector and call it wave. There we go. And so we're going to connect the sawtooth, the triangle, the sign, the pulse, and the noise. Now if we go back up to the panel, select that spanner, and move that, put the spanner back on, we can see now we can select between each waveform. They're all called in at the moment, so let's double click on that. Call that first one saw. Notice it changed the ins there. This next one's a triangle. Try sign pulse noise. There it is. Now we still can't hear anything. Don't worry. Connect that switch to that output. And now we can connect that output to the stereo mixer. So that's connected correctly. But we can't trigger this oscillator yet with our MIDI keyboard until we put some MIDI ins and MIDI outs on it. So in here, each one of these waveforms has got a pitch input and an amplitude input. So let's right click, put in built-in module in port built-in module, terminal, import. Whilst that's selected, over here we'll put P, because we're going to connect that to the pitch of every one of those oscillators, look. The only one that won't need it at this stage is the noise oscillator, because uh, it's got all frequencies in the human hearing range anyway, so uh, it won't matter what key we press with the noise oscillator. And if we double click, go back up a level, we'll see that P input has appeared there. So let's right click on that, built in module, MIDI in, note pitch. So right click, built in module, MIDI in, note pitch. Then do it again, and this time select gate. So we're going to connect the pitch to that oscillator, and notice the lights have come on, so it must be connected correctly still not hearing anything because the MIDI keyboard hasn't opened the gate yet. So we need gate to open the oscillator with the MIDI keyboard and we need pitch so it tracks the keyboard note that you actually play. Double click on oscillator one, go back inside. Right click, built in module, terminal, import. Whilst that's selected, I'm going to call that G. Connect the G, the gates, to all the A's on these waveforms, these oscillators. Double click, go back up a level, and now we've got the gate. That's connected correctly, so the gate comes in here, the note pitch comes in here, and there you are. Our oscillator is working, our multi-wave oscillator. So um, do a save there, file, save it, save, uh, save it somewhere. So we've got a multi-wave oscillator and a stereo mixer, fantastic. You could right click on this pan here and create control. I won't because I'm recording in mono right now. Um, what's next? What could we uh, add to this to make it a bit more interesting? Well, let's add an amp envelope so we can control the entry and exit points and sustain points and the way it decays the sound itself. At the moment we've just got raw sound. We can't shape it other than play the keyboard. Let's make our own amp envelope. Right click, built-in module, LFO envelope, and then go down to ADSR. And then this appears. And notice we've got imports on this uh, ADSR. There's the gate that we're going to connect and the others of the envelope. So that gate is connecting to the G. And then there's ADSR. So the gate, let's drag that gate there and connect 
the gate to the amp envelope instead and then the output of the amp envelope into the gate input of the oscillator so we've put the ADSR in between the gate and the oscillator itself look and then we can right click on the A create control notice it starts appearing on the panel right click on decay appears on the panel put the spanner icon on so you can move it around right click on sustain right click on release so you've got ADSR there if you select the ADSR itself go over to the inspector for that ADSR view if you put visible on it'll give you a little um, wave shape display or an ADSR shape display there it is there whilst you're in that whilst you've got that selected and you're in view mode you can also change the length of them so it matches up visually quite nicely put the spanner on move things around quite useful indeed now let's have a listen So we can start shaping um, the acoustic elements of this sound. Create reverse type ADSR settings. Create percussive type settings. And so on, shape our sound. Do a save and um, Let's put this ADSR in a macro in its own box so it'll appear like the oscillator with its own box around it because at the moment it's on the panel page and I can move these all around separately and uh, it can get a good, it can be better to put things inside boxes. So let's right click, macro, new, empty. Whilst that's selected, go to the inspector, select the macro, let's call it. ADSR amp env. There it is. Let's select the amp env and the ADSR functions there, not the gate. Command C, Command X gets rid of them. And then go inside that box that, that you've just created and then Command V, put it in. Right click built-in module, terminal, out port, select the output, right click, built-in module, terminal, in port, we'll call that G whilst it's selected, for the gate input, and then come back up a level, so that is inside there, look, and now connect that to the gate, and then the gate to that, and notice now it's inside a handy box that I can move around, a nice little module. So I can uh, start looking at this, view that, fader length, make it a bit more visually pleasing, change the length of this as we go. There you go, and then bring the oscillator over there. There you go. So do file save now and uh, we'll move on. So you can rewind and pause at will. That is the end of the first part of the subtractive synth tutorial. My name is Alan Miles. I'll see you later.